Welcome back to job costing. Topic two, actual, budgeted, and normal costing. Costing systems in the real world suffer from the problem of incomplete information, most typically from overhead. Actual overhead costs for a job are only known at the end of the year when the money has been spent. However, managers and companies need the ability to cost jobs or processes throughout the year for operating purposes. As a result, a predetermined or budgeting indirect cost rate is calculated at the beginning of the year and assigned to jobs. In summary, normal costing is a costing system that allocates actual direct costs based upon expected input and allocates indirect costs on the basis of budgeted incorrect indirect cost rates. Actual costing is the process of identifying actual costs incurred at the end of the year and assigning them to jobs. In an actual costing system, both direct and indirect costs are based on the actual cost rates, whereas under normal costing, the direct costs use actual cost rates, whereas normal costing uses a predetermined overhead rate applied using an actual cost driver, such as labor hours or square footage of materials used. Of the two, normal versus actual costing, which do you think provides the most accurate information? That's right, that'd be actual costing. Is accurate always best though? Hmm. Okay, well let's think about it this way. Of the two, which do you think provides the most timely information? If you said normal costing, you'd be correct. So now we are faced with a classic life conundrum, a trade-off between time and quality. So which is better, normal or actual costing? The answer is it depends. Being accountants, we tend to want to be right, quote unquote right, so you know, most accurate. However, if your project requires billing and collecting from clients in order to make payroll, it is likely the better business decision that good enough is good enough. There is a price to pay for accuracy and one that very may well cost you your business. This doesn't only apply to manufacturing, although we typically tend to talk about it in manufacturing terms because it provides pretty tactile visuals. However, here's a parallel uh, to one of my consulting jobs. It was uh, financial reporting consulting. It was messy. Uh, the client was on a fairly tight time deadline. Uh, and I got in and when I was providing, um, you know, just kind of some estimate of hours as well as, you know, scope of work, I asked uh, the CEO if he'd prefer to have financials free of material misstatement with solid supporting working papers. Um, or did he want pristine, 100% accurate financial statements with working papers that were pre-ticked and tied up for any auditor board member to come through and be able to pick up at any point. So did he want to go from this essentially hot pile of mess, messy goodness, uh, and did he want to make it materially accurate or did he want it pristine? I explained uh, the terms <laughs> to him in, in very simple business terms. The first would cost X, the second, five to 10 X, given the level of messy, messiness in which I would be starting with. So uh, the answer is it depends on your user. It depends on your client. And given any external constraints, notice how I said free material misstatement. These are still able to be audited. These are still being able to be reviewed. Um, these are still compliant with the law, any regulators. They're not wrong. They're just not friggin' pristine and 100% accurate. Uh, the client in this case was grateful. Um, he even said it as much. He said, thank you so much for giving me the choice. Um, absolutely, I would like free material in the statement. Uh, we can always look at making them pristine at a later date. We're under a tight timeline and I, I would, I know this is gonna not be cheap, so let's go with X and have it be good enough. Uh, at the end, the client was satisfied and um, you know we still talk to this day. Okay, so um, just really challenge yourself into thinking, um, you know, as a value added individual, not a n number crunching person without um, giving the forethought to why are you crunching the numbers? What value does it add? How can you speak to the numbers? 
So it's applicable to manufacturing, it's applicable uh, to you as a consultant, it's applicable to you right now as a student. Okay, let's look at a step-by-step -step approach here. Job costing can be broken down into some steps. Uh, students will always ask me, do I have to memorize these? No, I'm not gonna ask you what is step five of job costing. I don't care, I want you to do it. However, I provide you a framework um, because maybe the first time that you do this, you wanna go through you know, step by step and have this slide open and really test yourself to see, okay, can I turn this slide of steps into intuition? And that would be really what I would want you to do is to synthesize this and apply this in a way that's meaningful to you. Okay, so first, identify the job that needs to be costed. Do we have process? Do we have job costing? Sweet. Job costing. Proceed to number two. Identify all the direct costs associated. Any material, any labor. Okay, now we have some manufacturing overhead or just overhead. Let's select a basis for allocating any of those indirect costs. You know, how, what is the driver? What determines how much of these manufacturing overhead is this job using? Then number four, identify the total indirect costs and then find out um, a cost basis in which to apply um, each one of those direct indirect costs to each job. Number five, compute the rate for each allocation and allocate that indirect cost to each of the jobs or to the, your one job that you're looking at. Number six, compute it and assign. Number seven, add them all up. Add up your uh, step two and step six together. Add up all your DM, direct materials, DL, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. And now you know the total cost of the job. Perhaps from there you add on a margin, so it's a cost plus job, uh, or you go back to any one of those uses or more uh, that you may want to use job costing for. Let's look at an example. Acme is a company that produces special mining equipment and each piece of equipment produces, uh, produced is highly specialized. They use a job costing system. Huh. Uh, so step one, check. You are asked to calculate the cost of a job to create a new drill bit for a customer. This job will require four tons of iron, which can be purchased for $600 a ton. It will also require 75 hours of labor, which is paid at a rate of $32 per hour. The company has a single pool for all indirect costs, which it believes is closely linked to labor hours as a driver, meaning the more labor hours that a job uses, the more of these indirect costs it uses. So they wanna allocate these indirect costs using labor hours as the driver. In total, the company has $2 million in indirect costs and typically uses 30,000 hours of labor yearly. All right, so do we know if these are budgeted or actual? Uh, we don't, but it doesn't matter. It sounds like um, $2 million is indirect costs. Uh, it, I mean, and then it goes on to say it typically uses $30,000 of labor yearly. So when it says typical, to me, that indicates it's budgeted. And then when I hear $2 million in that context, it could be either budgeted or actual. But again, how would you know your total costs unless maybe there's salary rates of supervisors, rent costs? Either way, we are not given um, information here such that we really have to be concerned if it's normal or actual. I would say this is normal just because of the type where it says typically uses 30,000. Okay, so now you have a choice. You can either pause the video, go back to slide four and use the steps and see if the number that you calculate comes out to the same as I calculate, or you can let the video continue to play and I'll walk you through this uh, example. All right, welcome back. Here we have our job costing step-by-step -step approach from slide four and our example that we just read off from slide five. Let's do some calculations. First off, step one, identify the job to be costed. This is our job. Now let us, and so I already said check, they want us to calculate all costs for this new drill bit, okay. And all the direct costs, so we have direct materials and we have direct labor. This is gonna be step two. Uh, I have a saying, no marks for pretty. So your steps may be formatted slightly different from my steps. Cool, that's awesome. We are training you to be the people that are 
doing the calculations, understanding the calculations, programming the machines, fixing um, <laughs> fixing the machines, uh, and being able to communicate significant re uh, results uh, or what could go wrong at risks uh, to your users, to your clients. We will really hope, um, as I have uh, formatting people to help you in your life to make things pretty to kind of add that polish. Okay, so again, no marks for pretty in this class. Um, synthesize, analyze, uh, demonstrate competency, demonstrate understanding, make those connections. Um, it doesn't have to be pretty. Okay, step two, uh, DM, DL. I'm going to put something down here for overhead just so I don't forget. And we are told the job requires four tons of ore, four. That was a funny looking four, hey? Four times $600 per ton. So I'm going to have direct materials of $2,400. Then um, we'll require 75 hours of labor paid at a rate of $32 per hour. Okay, so 75 hours times by 32, $2,400. So now I have finished um, finding out all of my direct costs. Now I want to find out what the heck am I going to do with this overhead. And I'm just going to put it back over here too, just so that I can, I'm going to Total, total job costs. I'm gonna write myself some little notes here because I like making sure that I will come back and do things. Okay, that is the goal. Okay, um, the company has a single pool for indirect costs, meaning they throw all the costs into one big bucket and link to labor hours. So like I said before, the more labor hours uh, a job uses, the more of these indirect costs it is said to have kind of contributed to. Okay, so the company has $2 million in indirect costs and uses 30,000 hours annually. So let's find out the overall overhead rate for the entire company. So we would take our $2 million divided by our 30,000 hours of um, labor annually, and we get an overhead rate of $66.67. Uh, so what this means is that for every hour of labor a job uses, it should get $66.67 of this overhead rate. Okay, so how many uh, direct labor hours did this job use for the new drill bit? They used 75 hours of labor. So 75 times by our overhead rate here, and we get 5,000. So what does that mean that our total job is going to cost the company? It is going to be the sum of DM, DL, and overhead rate. So it's going to be $9,800 is the total cost of this job. Okay. Thanks so much. Let's go back to the slides. All right. So now it's time to really test yourself. Here's a question for you. You own a business that produces specialized ultralight hobby aircraft for aviation enthusiasts. You have just received an order for a new plane and must determine the total job cost. You will use four square meters of plastic at a cost of $145 per square meter, 22 hours of specialized labor at a cost of $42 per hour. You believe that machine hours is the most reasonable basis for allocating indirect costs. The job will require 20 machine hours. This year, you expect to use 2,000 machine hours in total and incur $100,000 in total indirect costs. What is the cost of this job? Is it A, 1,000, B, 2,504, C, 1,504, or D, 1,580? All right, let's work through this together. You can feel free to use the steps that we talked about from slide four. I am going to do kind of a quick and dirty version of that here. Okay, so we have direct materials which is four meters times by 145, direct labor, which is 22 hours at $42 per hour. We have manufacturing overhead, which I'll just leave blank right now and go over and look at our rate. So this year it will be $100,000 in total manufacturing overhead uh, divided by 2,000 machine hours expected to be used. So our 
manufacturing overhead rate is going to be $50 per machine hour. So we say, can say MOH rate per machine hour. And then we are told that this job will require 20 machine hours times by our rate. We have $1,000 here. Let's sum up all of our costs here. And we receive an answer of a total job cost of 2,504, which means B is our correct answer. All right, thank you so, so much. We have one set of slides left and I will see you in the next video.